Hi guys and welcome back to our next video. Now here the point of that video is again practical and here I'm going to show you a quick uh, demo of uh, one specific tool which basically extends our range of knowledge and uh, you may ask why there are so many tools and they work quite the same. No, they do not work quite the same and of course there are differences between the tools. And, and for example, there is situational engagements where one, one of the tools cannot do the job, but the other can. So that's why uh, you need to know a wide range of tools. So whenever something fails, you have to immediately switch back and try with the other one and with the other one and with the other one, unless you get a success. And that's how the systems work. That's how the security works. We have to know as much things as possible. Therefore, we have to be able to throw as much things as possible as well. So the tool I'm going to talk about today is basically called Wi-Fi Fisher and uh, it has more opportunity besides hacking uh, wireless networks. It can even hack Facebook accounts and it can even uh, inject payloads and so on. So you're going to see that tool in action and basically it's kind of like a more last resort. I'm going to explain to you why but uh, without further ado let's just open that and install the tool using GitHub. So you need to get a uh, git uh, installed on your system if you don't run git open a terminal simply and type uh, apt-get install git this is going to install all git packets for you see git already the newest version now go to navigate wifi fisher download in any browser you want therefore go to github page since most open source tools are downloaded from there so you probably need git for that you definitely need git so click on copy the link Open a terminal. I'm gonna navigate to my desktop since it's uh, easier to basically understand and to visualize the folders right there. So here I can go and simply type git clone and specify the URL. So keep in mind that in the terminal, the, the default copy and paste are with control and shift and CV, like uh, C for copy, V for paste, and uh, do not actually uh, type control C because it's gonna terminate any process whatsoever, any process running. So uh, we have Wife Fisher Forger. Now go to Wife Fisher. Let's see what we have there. And we can, for example, see the bin. And there is our script file. So we can go and uh, run the script file using bash commands. Now it's uh, basically. Now we need to basically sp uh, plug in our. Uh, wireless adapter which basically can uh, support monitor mode so be right back in a second okay guys i'm back with my wireless adapter which actually supports monitor mode so i can simply plug it to my usb and now uh i have config if i don't see the interface right here i need to basically manually specify and bring it up so i can go for i have config that we're on zero and up by running that command we are bringing up the interface so we have our uh, wireless zero interface here with the network manager i see the wireless button right here so i have the wireless adapter and if i wait a little bit more i should get the complete list of uh, basically networks right there yeah so now let's just rerun the script and see if there's any error still hope not everything seems going fine now and now it's basically uh, testing and probing callable networks b around me. So here uh, we have our test networks which is right there and we're gonna show some of the attacks on that network. So uh, this basically is automatic, uh, this tool, uh, sorry, is basically automatically targeting and showing all the available networks around us. So it's doing all the air dump and jeep for us, it's doing all the monitor mode stuff for us so we don't need to manually specify the monitor mode and so on. So you see, you just run the script and it automatically starts, bam. If uh, every, every error occurs, the script is gonna prompt us with some uh, dependency error. So we need to run the setup script or the install one, or we need to manually install the dependencies. But in our case, we have everything up and running. So just run the script and it automatically sees the networks out there. So now here we can uh, just target the network using the enter key. We have uh, instructions over there. We have escape for quit, apparel for move up, down for down, and of course, enter by default in any Linux system is for continue or select or so on. So click enter. We see we have we we have you, you, 
we have your self selected test and now we are prompted with some kind of a menu about the different attacks that we can implement using that tool so the first attack is the firmware uh, upgrade page the very similar with the one that we we've done with function but uh it kind of works with a little bit different and i'm going to explain now why we have network major connect this basically uh, simulates the Windows Network Messenger uh, Manager, sorry, which is really, really great one. We have the Facebook credentials for basically free uh, wireless access. And therefore we have browser plugin update. So basically this can inject uh, some paywalls to a target and so on. So we have four attack vectors using that tool. So the first tool, uh, just inspect it out. Now I'm going to explain why that tool is basically used for last resort and why uh, basically you should first go for the air gathering for example if you want to hack the network with evil twin because with the air network or if we do that manually which uh, i don't recommend because there are a lot of things and you can mistake a lot of things the tool is doing that automatically for you so basically when we're attacking a network with evil twin attack the air gathering what did uh, the air gathering basically uh, captured the handshake and whenever passphrase was passed to it on the phishing page, it was directly interacted with the handshake throughout the real AP. So basically using that handshake by gathering the passphrase using air crack and the handshake, we were able to try the combination and we can get the user uh, the input in real time or the output. So basically if the user centers a wrong password, we're gonna immediately know that the password is wrong and therefore we're gonna prompt the user that the password was wrong and we cannot let him use the, the wireless, the internet so, or so on. Now that too, the disadvantage of that too is that we don't work with handshakes, we don't get any handshakes from the network and so on. Basically we are uh, blind and we are trusting every combination the user gets because if the user types something in mistake, uh, the update is still going to continue and therefore uh, we're going to get the wrong passphrase which is not the case. So this is the disadvantage of, of the attack. We don't compare the handshake, we don't compare the password from the user with the password uh, from the real password using the handshake. So we're not using aircraft here. But uh, it has some advantages and the first one is that we can uh, use network manager which you're gonna see in the, just like a few minutes. We can go for Facebook attacks and we can go for payload injection. So we can go for one and see what happens. So one, enter. You have selected firmware upgrade and now uh, we need to basically run the tool with force host APD because it requires a raw host APD, which is not in installed in our system. So in order to run the tool, just run it with uh, force host APD. And before run that, make sure you have installed a host APD. So apt get install host APD. Yeah, mine is to the newest version, but if you don't have it installed, please run that command and sudo if you're not root. So we can now run the command run the script with the command uh, force host apd now uh, the procedure is going to be quite the same but now we are forcing the mechanism uh, to be host apd instead of raw host apd uh, which is basically rec recommended by the developers of that tool but with host apd is still doing the work so we don't have to worry about nothing now we just need to basically uh, select the test again Select the first option. Now everything should be fine. Starting the fake access point. Now we have a running web server and this is basically the menu of our attack. So whenever you see that menu right here, uh, the attack is going on. So basically now we are attacking. And now if we actually uh, see the wireless out there, we won't get a connection, I guess. Now it's the authenticating everyone here. Basically, if I open, uh, yeah, I got uh, disconnected. So basically, the, the authentication packet is working. Now my machine is trying to automatically reconnect to that network, but uh, the, the, the authentication packets are continue going by. So I get the authenticated again here. I don't have, now I have, and that cycle repeats unless uh, I see the test two because now the tool configured that way and I decided to go test 2 and uh, connect because I don't have an internet connection. 
now I'm connecting to the fake KPI there. We have uh, we have to wait a little bit to see uh, basically to launch our payload, our web page uh, automatically. So the, conne the connection here is quite delayed. So this is one of the disadvantages of that tool when we are actually accessing the uh, the wireless network the connection is kind of slowed down and uh, not that fast but here it automatically opened a page which was similar to the one that we used with function so the page is quite the same we have firmware uh, upgrade now we need to click uh, agree and now we have to enter the passphrase which in our case should be basically wrong so if i go for a wrong one and start uh, upgrade you see now the update is going on and I still get the password, which is uh, wrong one. We have here with uh, WPA password equals wrong one and so on. So basically this attack is not that useful. Well, depends on level twin. If uh, I'm on real engagement, if I depend on real twin attack, I wouldn't go for that too. But if just nothing else worked, I'm going to go for that too. And uh, as my last resort. Now it's time to basically show the next option, which uh, is the network manager and which I think is uh, more better and uh, more beautiful and has more chance of success. So we're going to basically run that command again with force host APD again to force that mechanism. And now uh, we're going to select the same target again. Here we are going to basically disconnect from that network and connect to my real one since now we can nothing is authenticating us yeah so now we i think we have internet connection so if i ping let's say google.com no ping whatsoever let's open a page maybe i disable the license peter barman firewall so google.com yeah we have we have connection Nice. So basically the ICMP is disabled in my firewall. I need to pre-configure that, but we have internet connection. So now click uh, test again, since it's our test network. And uh, now we have uh, network major option, click enter. Now it's going to set up everything needed again and uh, start the HTTP server, HTTPS server, and now we're running the attack again. As we said before, this is the menu of running the attack. We have uh, IP interface, we have the option uh, escape for exit, and we have uh, basically the authentication, that MAC address, and so on. So basically, it's the authenticating three MAC addresses, three devices on, on that network. It's the authenticating every single one of them. So now we should be basically prompted with no internet access. Now, if I go to connect to test two, let's see what uh, basically happens. And uh, yeah, the connection is just a little bit slower, and that's the main disadvantage because usually the people do not have, do not want to wait, and they do not like to wait. So that's why that tool is gonna be used as last resort. But the third and fourth options are the most interesting in because besides evil twin, we can go for Facebook attacks, and we can go for uh, basically injecting payloads. So uh, we have connected right here. Now, now it was a little bit uh, faster than the previous one. Now we are connected basically to a page where it says there is no internet connection. And we see uh, down to the bottom, we have uh, connect, which is very, very nicely done here. I just need to show that too, because this, this attack is really nicely done. So basically, whenever you connect to through a network, it automatically sends you to a page. And when you are basically not a IT person or not an IT user or not an IT spe specialist, a security specialist, because many IT guys like developers, they do not care about security and they do not watch about that stuff. You're going to see that the, the login or the network manager is similar to the Windows 10 one, which uh, they've recently updated and it's kind of more like uh, more stretched. Uh, but uh, it looks like pretty damn amazing and it looks like uh, pretty identical and see we have no internet connection the I, i'm not sure that the dinosaur is working right here no it's not but we have the page right here which is uh, nicely done and we have uh, the default web page about having no internet access and we have uh, the network manager which says connect to have internet access so when we click connect we are prompted with the password uh, click connect 
Come on. Yeah. We are prompted with the, with the password, which is uh, password praise and the password to a uh, login or uh, yeah, the password uh, page. And now you can see if I managed to basically direct to, if I basically managed to connect to some other network, I'm going to see the almost the exact same page. The page here is just slightly more witched and stretched out, but uh, it's kind of identical and uh, basically amazingly done. You can see that these are really nicely made tools that th this attack is implemented really nice. The developer really has made a lot of work through this and basically a lot of guys, a lot of people I like, can be tricked with that attack. And here uh, we need to basically type the passphrase, which again, as I said before, will be not tested in real time. We have no handshake, we cannot throw that password to the AP using aircrack. And now the AP is not accepting any connection since we are the authenticating everything. So we cannot connect with our machine whatsoever. So we need to enter passphrases like uh, cut your, save them of course, cut off the attack and they try manually every single one of them since we do not have air crack. We can of course write on tools and uh, write scripts that can do that for us. But uh, besides there are attacks that do that automatically and tools, so that's not the case. And now, uh, Basically, we can enter anything here, like I'm going to uh, enter wrong again, wrong again, and now click next. Now nothing ever happens right here, but on our machine, basically, we have wrong again. We have prompted out here. And basically, the point with that attack is whenever we are basically uh, visited with some credentials, because we're going to see only that, we are not ever going to basically see the attacker point of view because now we are basically simulating a two-way attack. This is our attacker's machine, this is our victim's machine, and, and with the attacker's machine we are seeing just that. We are seeing just that window and we are ready for credentials. And we have to do is basically whenever we get a credential so like that one, we have to cut down the attack and basically start our machine as fast as possible whenever we save down the credentials. And why that? Because when we actually, for example, get the credentials and restart our machine when saving them, we are restoring all the services. We are restoring everything as it was. So the guy is going to disconnect from our fake network. He's going to connect to his real one. And therefore, he's going to have internet connection. So basically, if we do that fast, we can basically spoof successfully and trick the victim successfully that he has now internet connection from his real network, So which is the case. So basically, you see the implement the implementation of that attack is hard, and uh, we have to be very careful. And the chance of success is not that big because maybe the user can mistype the password, and uh, we cannot wait like five users to type five times every everyone their passwords in order to compare and see which is the right one. We have to act fast because we must stay like uh, invisible. And if five users are entering that few of the passwords and we are not resetting anything and uh, the network has still no access, they're going to get suspicious about it. And they're going to immediately change the, the router's password and going to restart. If they basically notice anything. So basically we have to immediately restart the attack, restart the machine, basically all the service is going to restart. And uh, we're going to save the credentials, of course, before that. So basically we can, after the reboot, we can try that manually without their crack to connect to that network. If, the, if it was successful, amazing, great, our job is done. If it's not, we can think of another thing like uh, brute forcing or so on, or, or another attacks or another methods. So uh, this is the first two options I wanted to show you. I thank you for watching. In the next two options, we're going to continue with the next video where we're going to explain about the Facebook one and the payload one, and we're going to see how they do work. But uh, for now, if you use that too, I highly recommend second and third option. They work quite the best for now. The, if, if you're going for fake uh, AP or uh, evil twin uh, attack, better go for Ergeron or manual configuration. But my preference is really Ergeron. And if not, if you want some kind of Facebook credentials and so on, you can go for that attack. And if you want to use the network manager, you can use that attack as well. But as we said, it's no, there's no guarantee that you're going to success. Of course, there is no guarantee with the other tools. But uh, here the chance is slightly reduced because they may mistype the password.
So uh, this was today's video about uh, why Fisher and its uh, first two options. Now in the next video we're going to continue with the next uh, two options and I'm going to explain what they do and how do they work. So I really appreciate you guys for watching and see you in the next video.